I'm Mr. Z, and this is your video on calculating residuals and the coefficient of determination. Now, a residual is basically how far off your predicted values are from your actual values. By definition, it is the difference between the actual value and predicted value. The formula is basically the residual equals actual minus predicted. I call that the residual wrap. I use a little acronym, RAP, to help you remember the order in which you subtract them. Residual, actual, predicted, and the formula is resid equals y minus y hat. Remember the little hat above the y means that it is a predicted y. It may not be the actual y, but is, it is what the line or the linear model predicts uh, given any x. Okay. The coefficient of determination, or r squared. So you've seen this, and I've told you not to worry about it because uh, we haven't talked about it yet. So this is me talking about it. You're going to get r squared, which mathematically is uh, literally the correlation, and then square it. So you're going to move it to a percentage. So if it was 0.8543, you'd move it to 85.43%. And it accounts for the percentage of the variation in y explained by the least squared regression line. It's more or less how well the line fits the data. Okay, High values of r squared mean high percentages, mean reliable models, linear models. Uh, low values mean they're not as reliable. And we'll see all that throughout examples. So here's our first example. You may recognize this. This is the 10 students in the Calc course, and we have their midterm grade, and we have their final grade. Uh, and as usual, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put these numbers into our calculator, list one, list two. Okay, same for the Casios. And then we're going to stat, calc, and remember linreg ax plus b. Okay, and remember you want to type in list one, comma, list two. Okay, and you get your a, b, r squared, and r. Now, um, Casios, remember yours is a little bit different, but you get the same you will get the same numbers. Okay, now I'm just going to copy these down, okay, so that I can use those. Now we've talked about these uh, the other day in class. We talked about A being the slope, 0.5565. We talked about B being the y-intercept. We did not talk about R squared, which we we'll talk about today, and we talked about R being the correlation, which is 0.8926, which tells me that this is a strong or very strong positive correlation. Okay, uh, and we can also look at the scatter plot, but we should have that. Now, let's answer some questions based on that. Again, you should be pausing this if I'm going too fast and copying it down, and definitely follow along and copy down the questions so that you have them in your notes. It's not, it's not good enough to just watch this. You want to have it copied down so you can go back to it at later times. Okay, so write the least squared regression line in the context of the problem. Okay, so if I go back, A, 0.5565, and B, 35.39. Okay, so A equals 0.5565, and B equals 35.39. Okay. So if you remember our formula, y hat equals ax plus b. Okay, so we plug in the numbers. y hat equals 0.5565x plus 35.39. Okay, and continued things that we've been talking about is just numbers are not enough. We have to talk about the context of the problem. So to apply the context, and again, this is points on my tests and quizzes, points on your AP exam. Instead of y hat, we're going to use the y values. If I go back to my data, the final grade is uh, or are my y values. So I'm going to say final hat, which again is the predicted final grade. It may not be the actual final grade. 0.55. 6, 5 times midterm, I'll abbreviate because I'm kind of running out of room, so midterm plus 35.39, yikes, okay, and remember in your textbooks, 
that they switch them. So you may see something like this, 35.39 plus 0.5565 times the midterm. Okay, they like to uh, they like to switch it and put the y-intercept first. I will accept either. I use this one because it's more familiar with what you've learned in the past. And remember, you wouldn't abbreviate on a test or quiz. Okay, interpret the slope. So the slope we said was 0.5565. Okay, so this is, again, a little quick review. Remember, slope is change in y over change in x. I always take the slope, 0.5565 and put it over 1, and then I write in the units. Because again, interpret is the context. That's telling you to interpret the slope in the context of problems. So the y values are final grades, and the x values are midterm. OK? So that's basically my slope, 0.5565 final for every one midterm. So as a sentence, for every one increase in midterm grade, the final grade increases by 0.5565 points. Okay, so now I've talked about what that number actually means. The final grade's going up 0.5565 every time the midterm grade goes up 1. Okay, interpret the y-intercept of the least squared regression line. So our y-intercept is 35.39. Remember, that's when x equals 0. That's when the y or the line crosses the y-axis so that the x value is 0. So basically, I'm going to say uh, let's say a score of 0 on the midterm would produce A score, ah, I don't like it. A score of zero on the midterm. That's fine. Would produce a score of 35.39 on the final. Okay, it's basically like your starting point. So the final grade started at 35.39 and then went up 0.5565 for every uh, increase in midterm. Okay, correlation or coefficient of determination. We talked R squared. R squared 0.7968. Okay. We move that to a percentage, 79.68%. Okay? Now, we write this as a sentence, and this is just a sentence that you're going to have to memorize. So, we say 79.68% of the variation in Y. But instead of saying Y, we're going to, of course, use the context. So, final grade... can be explained by the least squares regression line. Okay? Now, we'll, in class, talk much more about what this number actually means. But for now, you need to know that you're going to turn it to a percent, and you're going to copy this down. I'm going to underline a few things. Boom. Boom. Those two things change 
from question to question. Everything else stays the same. It's just a sentence you got to memorize. This is going to be r squared, and this is going to be the y values. Okay, everything else is going to remain the same. Okay, last we talk about residuals. So, here I have my scatter plot of the data, and I have my least squared regression line, which again is y hat equals 0.5565. X plus 3539. Okay? That's this red line here. So that's the equation of that line. Okay? As you can see, the dots are somewhere above, some are below. The residual is basically how far off those points are. So I want to calculate the residual for Maria. Maria had an 81 and then a 67. Okay? So, she scored 81.67. That's her XY point, and it's this point right here. Okay? Basically, her actual score was a 67. Her actual final score is a 67. If I use the model to predict right here, that will be her predicted score. I can get that very easily. She scored a um, 81 on the midterm. So, if I plug in 81, 5565 five, times 81 plus 35.39, I can get her predicted value. And if I type that in my calculator, I get 80.47. So, according to my linear model, I would have predicted her to have a score of 80.47. Well, she didn't get an 80.47. She got a 67. So the residual, according to my residual wrap, is actual minus predicted. So her actual score was a 67. Her predicted score was an 80.47. And if I subtract those two numbers, I get negative 13.47. So she has a residual of negative 13.47. That is this distance right here on my graph. Okay, This is the y hat. That's what I get if I plug in 81 into my x and I get back this y value right here, this predicted y of um, 80.47. So when I subtract those two, I get the distance. That distance there is negative because her point was below the line. Okay, let's look at um, Ashley. Okay, Ashley had a 50 and a 66. Okay, so first off, I need to see what the linear model predicts for Ashley. So 0 0.5565 times 50 plus 35. 39 equals 63.215. Let's call that 2, 2. Okay, so her residual is again actual minus predicted wrap y, her actual score of 66, minus her predicted score of 63.22, which gives me a residual of 2.78. Okay, now if you look at her point, this is her point right here, this is uh, uh, 50, okay, and 66 right here. If you look at hers, hers is barely above the line. It was very close to that line. So that distance from y, that's the y value, to y hat is much smaller. It's only 2.78. So each one of these points basically has a residual that tells how far away from the least squared regression line that it is. So now you should have an idea of how to interpret r squared and how to calculate the residual of any point.